Hi, welcome back to The Right Channel. Today's video is all about story structure. I'm gonna take you through the three main aspects of story structure and talk you through how you could use them as a writer. My main advice watching this video is that this is all stuff that you need to be aware of, but you don't wanna obsess about it too much. So you wanna think about it, but you don't wanna let it hold you back. Okay, so I'm going to cover three main concepts with you today. The first concept is three-act structure, which is one of the really basic ideas, but something that can be the most helpful, actually. Then we're going to talk about something that's called seven basic plots. I'm going to tell you where that comes from and its relevance. I'm going to give you some examples so that you really get what it means. And finally, I'm going to take you through something called story beats, which is about the rhythm of your story. So I'm going to start with a really simple model of structure, and this is the basic three act structure. Put really simply, all this means is that stories have a beginning, middle and an end, but we can break this down a little bit more. So the beginning is the exposition. This is the world as it starts out. At some point we get an inciting incident, and this is what kicks the action off. And this leads us into our rising action. This rising action gets more and more tense until we get to a climax of the story. And after the climax, we get what we call falling action. In the end, we have a denouement, which is the resolution of the story. So this is really simple three act story, exposition, rising action leading to a climax and falling action leading to a denouement or resolution. So we've got a little bit more here, and this shows us again the three act structure, act one, act two, act three. In act one, we've got the characters being set up, the conflict being set up, everything being established. Act two is where the tension and the conflict rises after we've had that all important inciting incident. And act three is where we have the resolution and the climax of the story. This is a slightly better diagram because the other diagram does make it look like everything takes up equal parts of the story. And in actual fact, usually act two is the really big part of the story. Act one, increasingly, we get this started sooner and sooner. We get act one over with, we get the inciting incident and go into the most important part of the story. And that's the rising action and all the complications and conflict. And then right at the end, we'll get our resolution and our our climax so not quite the neat triangle that we saw in the previous diagram but this is a slightly better more accurate way of representing what actually tends to happen in modern stories so we can take models of structure further and further and get increasingly complex but this is one I like a lot and it's called the hero's journey or sometimes called the monomyth by somebody called Joseph Campbell now, what I really like about this model is that it puts your character right at the centre of the plot. So we have our hero here and they are called to adventure. They're a supernatural aid. Now, sometimes you have to work a little bit hard to interpret what that means in terms of modern stories. They have to overcome the threshold guardians like the minions who are trying to stop them. And they will go on a journey that will be full of challenges and temptations. They'll be helped by helpers and mentors. They'll reach a point of crisis and abyss where they'll metaphorically die and be reborn. Ultimately, they will have transformation and atonement and return. So this is a hero's journey. And yes, you sometimes have to work a little bit harder with modern stories to map every element to this model. But it is a really good and a really interesting model, not least because at the very core of it, we have character is plot. But actually, my favourite model of structure is quite a simple one, ultimately pretty much based on the three act model of structure. And this is one invented by the Pixar studios. So we do get a bit of a sense of the fairy tale about it, but I quite like that too. So we have our once upon a time and every day. This is the status quo at the beginning of the story. Then we have our one day where everything changes. So this is like the inciting incident of the story where the rising action starts. And our rising action, because of that, because of that, until we get to our resolution, until finally. So let's have a quick look at an example. So I've actually filled this out for Cinderella. So we've got our once upon a time, there was a girl, i.e. Cinderella. Every day she had to clean after those ugly sisters. We all know the story. But one day there was a huge announcement because the prince was having a ball. He wanted to meet his new queen. So because of that, she met the prince and actually they fell in love. 
but also because of that she lost her glass slipper and she didn't know if she would ever see him again but because they'd fallen in love and because of that he came to find her and he tried the slipper on her and it fitted and finally they lived happily ever after you get the picture i do like using fairy stories to illustrate models of structure i think they can be extremely helpful now something that you might find useful as a writer and that i've become increasingly convinced about over the years is a theory that there are seven basic plots the seven basic plots were originally identified by christopher booker based on his extensive reading but these have actually been kind of confirmed by some more recent research, some textual analysis done with computers by a pair of researchers called Archer and Jockers. And they identified exactly the same seven basic plots that Christopher Booker had described. So these are the seven basic plots. Comedy, tragedy, overcoming the monster, rags to riches, the quest, voyage and return and rebirth. I'm going to talk about each one a little bit more and I'm going to show you some examples. So by comedy, we don't necessarily mean stories that are super funny or that have lots of jokes in them, although it can be. But actually, we're talking in more of a Shakespearean or dramatic way. So something like Midsummer Night's Dream would be the perfect example, where we have our characters who are thwarted by ridiculous circumstances and difficulties. So with tragedy, I'm going to talk about Shakespeare as well, because Macbeth is the perfect example for this one. So this is where we have a hero with a fatal flaw or an anti-hero with a fatal flaw who's the architect of their own destruction, just like Macbeth. And of course, we often have a femme fatale, just like Lady Macbeth. So this model also applies to an awful lot of the noir fiction that we saw in the 1940s and 50s. The quest, there's lots of good examples of this, but my favourite is Lord of the Rings, because it's so obviously a quest to get that ring. Then, of course, Voyage and Return. So something like Gulliver's Travel fits this one perfectly. And Rebirth. So A Christmas Carol is a good example of a rebirth narrative, where Scrooge is changed completely during the course of the story and becomes an almost completely different person. At the end of the day, though, my main advice when you're thinking about the structure and using this in planning or writing your novel is to keep it really simple. I honestly think that you can't go too wrong with the three act structure and just thinking about your story having a beginning, middle and end. There's one last thing I'd like to talk about when it comes down to the structure of your stories. And this is something that I've started to call story beat. And I think is super important if you want a book that's got that page turn ability. My ideas and interest in Story Beat also came out of reading the research by Archer and Jockers in a book called The Bestseller Code. And what they did is did this textual analysis using computers on a whole bunch of bestsellers and a whole bunch of books that weren't bestsellers and looked for patterns and anything that they could identify that would help us understand why bestsellers became so popular. If there was an anatomy of a bestseller in terms of subject matter, and structure and all of these things and they came up with all sorts of findings but one of the most interesting for me was something that I've started to call story beat and I've kind of represented it here by this graph with the ups and downs of a story so the idea is that you have the fate of the characters turning really regularly probably at least once a chapter so things are changing for the character one minute there's a high the next minute everything's gone wrong and there's a low now, what Archer and Jock has found was that this kind of story beat, this kind of very regular pulsing of the story was evident in only a few books. But those books have been incredibly big sellers. So we're talking about things like The Da Vinci Code and Fifty Shades of Grey. And it was probably the main thing that those books had in common. So I think this is really interesting and actually quite important. And in fact, I think this is something that you can incorporate into your planning. I know that Dick Kingsmith said, and there's a quote from him in a book that another book that I read about being a best selling writer. So uh, he said that basically you should end every chapter. You should keep your chapters short and end every chapter on a cliffhanger. And I think there's something to be said for that, because if you end your chapters on a cliffhanger, the reader wants to keep on going. And at the end of the day, for me, that's my ultimate aim to make my reader keep on going, to make it difficult for them to put that book down. The biggest compliment, in that, my opinion, is when a reader says to you that they couldn't put your book down. Story beats, something to think about, something to consider in your planning. Are there enough twists and turns to keep the story interesting and keep your reader 
glued to that page? Do you do cliffhangers at the end of chapters so that your reader needs to turn the next page and carry on into the next chapter and potentially finish the book sooner? If you don't, my advice would be to consider it because I think this kind of beat of your story is super important. So now you know all about story structure and all your stories going forward are going to be excellent, really well structured and super tight, so fantastic. So my advice is to understand this and have an overview of it, maybe apply it to your stories, have a think about what the three acts are, for example, or which one of the seven basic plots you might be using in your story. But don't take it too seriously. Don't let any of this stuff hold you back. It's tools that you can use to help you structure and make your story better. But it isn't something that you absolutely have to stick to. So thanks for tuning in again. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below. So for more of the same and regular videos about creative writing and craft, make sure you subscribe below and press the bell so that you're updated when I release new videos. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.